Uh, just a few words before we start. Welcome to everybody. Um, we were supposed to read post in, in French most of the time, and uh, we've realized that it might be a bit tricky, so part of it will be read in English, and uh, most of it. So. The sea will always fascinate those people in whom the disgust with life and the enticement of mystery have preceded their first distress, like a foreboding of reality's inability to satisfy them. People who need rest before so much as experiencing any fatigue will be consoled and vaguely excited by the sea. Unlike the earth, the sea does not bear the traces of human works in human life. Nothing remains of the sea. Nothing passes there except in flight. And how quickly the wake of a ship disappears. Hence the sea's great purity, which earthly things do not have. And this virginal water is far more delicate than the hardened earth, which can be breached only by a pick. With a clear sound, a child's footstep in water leaves a deep wake, and the united tinges of the water are broken for a moment. Then, every vestige is wiped away, and the sea is once more calm, as it was on the earliest days of the earth. The man who is weary of earthly paths, or who, before even trying them, can guess how harsh and how vulgar they are, will be seduced by the pale lanes of the sea, which are more dangerous and more inviting, more uncertain and more forlorn. Everything here is more mysterious, even those huge shadows that sometimes float peacefully across the sea's naked fields, devoid of houses and shades, and that are stretched by the clouds, those celestial helmets, those tenuous balls. The sea has the magic of things that never fall silent at night that permit our anxious lives to sleep, promising us that everything will not be obliterated, comforting us, like the glow of a nightlight that makes little children feel less alone. And like the earth, the sea is not separated from the sky. It always harmonizes with the colors of the sky and it's deeply stirred by its most delicate nuances. The sea radiates under the sun and seems to die with it every evening. And when the sun has vanished, the sea keeps longing for it, keeps preserving a bit of its luminous reminiscence in the face of the uniformly somber earth. It is the moment of the sun's melancholy reflections, which are so gentle that you feel your heart melting at the very sight of them. Once the night has almost fully thickened, and the sky is gloomy over the blackened earth, the seal still glimmers feebly. Who knows by what mystery, by what brilliant relic of the day, a relic buried beneath the waves. The sea refreshes our imagination because it does not make us think of human life. Yet it rejoices the soul because like the soul, it is an infinite and impotent striving, a strength that is ceaselessly broken by falls, an eternal and exquisite lament. The sea thus enchants us like music which unlike language never bears the traces of things, never tells us anything about human beings, 
but imitates the stirrings of the soul, sweeping up the waves of those movements, plunging back with them. The heart thus forgets its own failures and finds solace in its intimate harmony between its own sadness and the sea's sadness, which merges the sea's destiny with the destiny of all things.
pour une famille vraiment vivante, où chacun pense, aime et agit. Avoir un jardin est une chose douce. Les soirs de printemps, d'été et d'automne, tous, la tâche du jour finie, y sont réunis. Et si petit que soit le jardin, si rapproché que soient les haies, elles ne sont pas si hautes qu'elles ne laissent voir un grand morceau de ciel où chacun lève les yeux, sans parler, en rêvant. L'enfant rêve à ses projets d'avenir, à la maison qu'il habitera avec son camarade préféré, pour ne le quitter jamais, à l'inconnu de la terre et de la vie. Le jeune homme rêve au charme mystérieux de celle qu'il aime. La jeune mère à l'avenir de son enfant. La femme, autrefois troublée, découvre, au fond de ses heures claires, sous les dehors froids de son mari, un regret douloureux qui lui fait pitié. Le père, en suivant des yeux la fumée qui monte au-dessus d'un toit, s'attarde aux scènes paisibles de son passé qu'en chante, dans le lointain, la lumière du soir. Il songe à sa mort prochaine, à la vie de ses enfants après sa mort. Et ainsi, l'âme de la famille entière monte religieusement vers le couchant, pendant que le grand tilleul, le marronnier ou le sapin répand sur elle la bénédiction de son odeur exquise ou de son ombre vénérable. But for a truly dynamic family, in which each member thinks, loves, and acts, for a family with a soul, how much sweeter it is if, in the evening, that soul can materialize in a voice, in the clear and inexhaustible voice of a girl or a young man who has received the gift of music and song. A stranger passing the gate of a garden in which the family holds his tongue would fear that his approach might rouse them out of a religious dream. But if the stranger, without hearing the singing, perceiving the gathering of friends and relatives listening to it, then how much more would the family appear to be attending an unseen mass? That is, despite the variety of postures, how strongly the resemblance of expressions would manifest the true unity of souls, a unity momentarily realized in their sympathy for the same ideal drama, by their communion in one and the same dream. At times, as the wind bends the grass and agitates the branches for a long time, a breath bows the heads or suddenly raises them again. Then, as if an invisible messenger were telling a thrilling tale, they all seem to be waiting anxiously, listening in rapture, or terror to the same news, which however elicits diverse echoes in each person. The anguish of the music reaches its peak. Its outbursts are shattered by deep plunges and followed by more desperate outbursts. For the old man, the lustrous infinity, the mysterious darkness of the music are the vast spectacles of life and death. For the child, they are the urgent promises of sea and land. For the lover, they are the mysterious infinity. They are the luminous darkness of love. The thinker sees his mental life unroll fully. The plunges of the faltering melody are its falterings and its plunges and its entire heart rebounds and snaps back when the melody regains its flight. The powerful murmuring of the harmonies stirs up the rich and obscure depth of its memory. 
The man of action pants in the melee of chords, in the gallop of vivaces. He triumphs majestically in the adagios. Even the unfaithful wife feels that her sin is forgiven, is lost in infinity, her sin, which also originated in dissatisfaction of the heart that, unappeased by the usual joys, had gone astray, but only in a quest for the mystery, and whose aspirations are not gratified by his music, which is as full as the voices of the bells. The musician, who however claims to take only technical pleasure in music, also experiences those meaningful emotions, which however are so thoroughly wrapped up in his concept of musical beauty as to be hidden from his sight. And I myself, finally, listening in music to the most extensive and the most universal beauty of life and death, sea and sky, I also feel what is unique and particular in your enchantment, O oh, darling beloved. Mm.